All right, it's cold and frosty here in the hills of North Georgia this morning, and we're gonna see if we can get the old beast to chooch to life uh, so we don't have to listen to the low air alarm while we're hunting electrical gremlins. I still hadn't got the parts in yet to fix the uh, air leak on the fuel system, so we're gonna just go ahead and give her two or three good pumps on the primer there. and see if she'll chooch to life. Got a little smoke? Give her just a second. series on running down the electrical gremlins on this 82 ford l8000 dump truck uh there's all kind of stuff i already told y'all there's all kind of stuff that doesn't work on it the headlights well any of the lights really and uh also the two-speed rear end is not shifting and i think i've got the the trouble run down on that but we're going to go through uh the diagnosis and the repair on that Okay, so the problem is the two-speed rear end isn't shifting. Uh, it's it's in low gear and will not go to high. Uh, and it doesn't make any sounds when you're trying to shift to high. So the very first thing we did was check to see if there was power to the terminal at the shift motor, and there's not. So, uh, next stop on the on the wiring is the switch and this is the switch that goes up there at the gear shift and you know it should be up for high and down for low well we pulled the switch apart which these things are real easy to come apart they just snap three lugs and the way this should be wired is you've got this red wire which is the high speed. You've got this green wire, which should be the hot coming in. And then this third lug down here is a black wire. You can't see it, but it's a black wire and it's the low speed going out. So when we put our meter on this with the key switch on, we should have 12 volts coming in. There we go. All right, 12 volts coming in. All right, and since the switch is disconnected, we should have nothing going out on the low speed side, which we do not. And we should have nothing going out right here. And we have some current there, not much. Now, when I was first trying to run this down, uh, we were getting 12 volts on this lug too. Uh, we're not now, but we are still getting some voltage back feeding onto that lug, which is your wire that should be coming from this switch to the relay that feeds the shift motor. So this one should be totally dead, just like this one is but we're getting something back feeding a little voltage there. I know it's dark and you can't see real good, but these are two metal cased relays here and here. This one is the low speed, and I don't know what kind of goobered up wiring they've got going right here. That doesn't make any sense, but anyway. Uh, and this is the high speed back here. So when you test this relay 
you should have this green wire is a constant hot coming to the relay. This red wire is coming from the switch that we just tested. So this is the wire that has got some current in it. It had 12 all the time, but I guess the relay was stuck closed and was grounding out. And that was why you were getting 12 to this. And, but it does still have some current. And then this wire is the 12 volts going out of it that was hooked to the wire going to the shift motor. So what we're going to do is replace both of these relays with a modern four post relay or four blade relay uh, instead of this old style three, uh, partially because these are really hard to find and also partially because they suck. So we'll fix this goofy bunch of mess here and this other bunch of wires here and then rewrap them all together again because uh, I cut all the covering off of them so I can track all this stuff down. Now, unfortunately, to get these off, there, there's a two bus bars here and we're gonna have to disassemble them and pull the whole thing off the firewall or not the firewall, the back wall. This is behind the seat of the truck. Uh, so we can get to all that. We'll have to take those two bolts out there and two on the bottom and this whole thing should slide off. Two things I want to add before we start on this is disconnect your battery cables so none of this stuff is hot in case any of these are a constant hot uh, right from the battery. Uh, I haven't checked any of them to see so it's just easier to disconnect the battery. These bus bars here are Bakelite and they are real easy to break. So disconnect both ends and slide this back. Any of this old uh, plastic or Bakelite electrical stuff that you see on these old trucks is gonna be real brittle and easy to break. So be careful with it. Okay, here's the old and the new relays. Now this old style has three blades, which would have been the constant hot coming in and then the 12 volts from the selector switch and then the 12 volts going out to the shifter motor and it was grounded through the metal case now the new style is just a small plastic relay you have to add a ground to it. So here's just a simple wiring schematic for it, which is incredibly ugly and my handwriting is horrible, but anyhow, y'all will get the idea. So if you look on the bottom of the relay here, let me get it oriented the same way as this. All right, at the very top you have 87. You can see the 87 on the, ship, on the relay there. That's the 12 volts that goes to the shift motor. And all these relays are, are numbered sort of universally. So uh, any relay that you get is gonna be numbered like this. So let's just start down here. Uh, on the blade labeled 30, that's your constant hot from the battery. And that should be fused. Okay, so you've got the constant hot coming in 85 is the ground that we have to add because this is a plastic cased relay. 87 goes out to the shift motor after the relay is closed. And then this is the 12 volts that come from the selector switch. And that goes to the lug 86. So we're gonna get all this wired up and uh, then I'll show y'all uh, kind of what we did, but we're working in a tight space back there and it's kind of hard to film. So just bear with me and I'll explain everything when we get it wired up. Okay, we've got everything temporarily wired up just to give it a test. Uh, we've got a ground wire run back here, just a jumper wire. We've got our two uh, relays hooked up to a ground and we've got our ground for our meter. We've got our push-pull switch back in, and we're gonna give it a try. 
I had it set it low. The key switch is turned on, and that means we should have 12 volts right here. And there we go. Just a hair shy of 12, but that, that's okay. So then we pull the switch to the high side. We heard some stuff move. And that means we should have 12 volts right here. I don't know if I can get my meter to stay on it. And we've got 12 there. So, we're going to hook everything back up and see if it'll work. All right, y'all, she ain't tagged to be out on the road yet, but we're going to see if it'll do.